Hi everyone. How are you? Welcome to my viral wisdom course number 33. So let me know where you're signing in from and how you are and let me know if I'm in the right page. I never know which page I'm on. So hi everyone. Welcome. Hi guys. I see you. I see you signing in and happy that you're here with me and let's talk about some stuff. But I'm going to just wait for people to sign in and show up. Happy that you're here. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Samir from India. Gabby, Louise, Maria, Enya. Hi, guys. I see you. And I'm happy that you're here with me. Just organize this. Hi, Stephanie, Simi. So let's begin today's talk and what I really want to talk to you about today. So yesterday I talked about death in essence and how we essentially live alone and die alone. It doesn't mean we're lonely. It doesn't mean we need to feel bereft and abandoned or rejected. It's just a fact of life that much of what we ultimately go through is alone. So I just want to let you know, I received quite a few emails where people were really upset with me. And they were cursing me and uh, literally upset that I said that. And what I want to talk to you about is that reactivity and where that kind of reactivity comes from. Where does it come from? Well, that reactivity comes from one place only, a deep fear, right? There was something I said that triggered a pain body, as Eckhart Tolle would say. There was a pain body and those words, just words, trigger a pain body, trigger, in my way of talking, the ego. The ego that wants to protect some fear inside, right? Some panic that we have that's deep down that we've covered it with a defense. So when that defense is triggered, you begin to fire, right? With your AK-47. Now your gun could be different than my gun, right? Some guns look like F you and you piece of crap and all out cursing. But some guns look different. They withdraw, they sulk, they are passive aggressive, they are avoidant, they ignore, they're neglectful. So each person has their own gun and they have many guns, some of them. So you have your own set of artillery when you're triggered. And it's really powerful and important for you to know what is your artillery when you get triggered. It's really important to know that if you want to know who you are. Okay, when I get triggered, I tend to withdraw. I tend to sulk. I tend to overeat. I tend to overdrink. What is your default where you go when you're triggered? So the ones that I got yesterday were in the line of you're so evil. I got a couple FUs right? How dare you talk like this? My father is in the hospital and he is going to die alone. And that's my greatest fear. So then I explained to one person, I chose to explain and said, we all die alone. This is not about hurting you. I'm just trying to expose you to some wisdom. So actually it brings you solace. And she wrote back another F you. F you again. I was like, okay, I get it. You're in a lot of pain. So when we are triggered, it means our pain body has been triggered. But because we're too triggered to say I'm in pain, because that would be too scary, too vulnerable making to say, you hurt me, I'm in pain, help me, I'm drowning. What we do is take out our artillery. Some artilleries are attack, some artilleries are withdrawal. We fight or we flight. Simple, primitive, we are animals. But I want us to go to an even deeper place today. I want us to begin to examine 
what is inside our, sorry, what is inside our belief systems that cause us to have the pain body in the first place. And that in psychology is called the subconscious belief system. What are your subconscious belief systems, your subconscious patterns that are beneath the ego, right? The ego is protecting you. The ego is your shield that you developed as a child to protect you when you are triggered. When your pain body is triggered, you have your ego. When your inner child, when your wounds are triggered, the ego comes out to protect you and, and sprays bullets. But what is inside? Inside are subconscious belief systems that you get from childhood, such as, I'm not good enough. The world is unfair. This always happens to me. This never happens to anyone else. I have bad luck. No one loves me. I can't do it. I'll never succeed. There's no point. Life is too hard. People are too mean. Black people are awful. White people are awful. Indian people are terrible. Muslims are this. Hindus are that. All these belief systems that we have inherited from childhood, they are in your blueprint. They are part of your DNA, your psychological DNA. And those are sitting like, uh, like sand at the bottom of a big jar of water. Now, each person has their own proportion of how much sand, as in how much belief, and how much water. And the more you grew up in a controlling, traditional environment where you were not allowed to think for yourself and you were given belief systems, the more sand in your jug. Now, you don't know that your jug is full of sand. You're thinking, it's just my jug. There's nothing, it's just my jug. My jug just looks like this. You don't realize it's full of belief systems clogging the water. You don't realize that because you just had your childhood. Your childhood kept dumping sand in your clear water, dumping, 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 do this, not that, think this, not that, believe this, not that, you are this, not that. And you just kept absorbing. And as you grew up, the sand kept filling up your clear water. So now when somebody comes from the outside and says anything to you, touches any part of the jug of water, because it's got so much inflammable material in there, AKA the sand, AKA your belief systems, anywhere they touch, something could detonate. So somebody says to you, you know, you're so stupid. And if your belief system already was, I'm not good enough, boom, explosion, right? Or somebody says to you, you know, I disagree with you. And anyway, in the, in the jug was a belief system that I'm not good enough, boom. And that's why you've noticed sometimes some people have such a crazy reaction to everything. Those people, I call as people who have a big ego, right? And the reason they have a big ego is because they have so much pain inside. The more ego, the more inner pain. And I know it's hard to accept the inner pain because the ego is so obnoxious, but that's the only way to heal the world is to see the more the outside, the more the less, or the more the pain inside and less the worth inside. So they have a big pain body, right? Everywhere you touch them, they're detonating because their pain body is so big. You know, sometimes you're like that. Some days your pain body is out of control. Everything bothers you. Now, the pain body is still on the surface. You have to go deeper. What are my subconscious belief systems? Because our subconscious belief systems, the sand in our pure jug, that we, we came as a pure jug of water like a jug of pure water. And our parents, our caregivers, and our culture kept dumping sand. You're not good enough. You're not this. You're this. You're, and you just kept absorbing. And your beauty and your light and your, your pure water, the your clarity of your water, kept getting clogged. 
Now, when you're an adult, you're losing your shit every minute because you have no choice. You are a walking, breathing, living landmine, ready, ready to be detonated by anything. That's why we need to eat a lot. We need to drink a lot of alcohol and we need to watch Netflix a lot to keep us calm. So the reason why we have experiences the way we do is less about the experience but more about the sand in our jug of water, so to speak. The belief system creates the experience. The experience doesn't create the experience. The belief creates the experience. How do I know this to be true? Because you can try this in your life. Tell one person that they're so silly and that, that person A will react in a certain way. Tell another person you're so silly and they react in a completely different way. Better still, tell one person they're an income poop, ignoramus, idiot. They react one way. They may laugh. The next person you say you income poop, ignoramus, idiot, and they'll get out there AK-47. Therefore, you know it's not the situation. You know it. It's the programming within that creates the experience. The experience is created from within. It is not created from without. I mean, this is like something I say a million times a day, but no one believes me. They're like, no, it's the outside. I'm like, no, it's the inside. No, it's the outside, doc. I'm like, no, it's the inside. So this woman who got angry with me because of my email, my email which said, you die alone. I think I could have phrased it better. I agree, I agree. My email said, you die alone. Because to me, it's the most liberating idea in the world to understand that we die alone. If I get that, then I get everything. Then I'm wise. Then I let go. I'm not dependent anymore. So I think I'm writing something lovely. You die alone. She had a big pain body because her father is dying alone. Poor baby. But she didn't just sit with her pain. She didn't just say, you know what? I'm experiencing this because of my inner life because of my inner unique circumstances she went she literally said you you you're wrong and i'm like no baby i'm not wrong because 1600 people didn't say anything and the 17th person or the 18th person in the road they said something not all the others and she's like no nope, it's you so what to do what to do now but we need to understand those of us who want to change our life that if we're experiencing something it is not from the outside only. It's also your inner patterning, your belief system. So for example, if it's raining and you experience the wetness of the rain, now that is because of the rain, because rain is wet. But how you experience the wetness of the rain, whether you giggle and you dance and you splash and you're joyful or you're upset and you're cursing and you're complaining and you're angry, now that, is dependent on your inner subconscious patterns. Now that's a silly example, but it leaks into every area of your life. How you handle whether you get fired, how you handle a compliment, how you handle an insult, whether you see something as a compliment or as an insult, how you handle your relationship, how you handle betrayal, loneliness, cheating, uh, trust, how you handle every aspect of your life comes not from the external, but from your subconscious patterning. And until you understand how you are there for co-creating life, right? So if there's a bank robbery when you're at the bank, that is certainly disturbing. Anyone could say it was disturbing, but the degree to which you're disturbed is your co-creation. The degree to which you're traumatized is your co-creation, right? It's not a given that everybody will be traumatized in the same way. And that is where you have power. Coronavirus is the coronavirus. It is a complete and utter shit show, really. So no doubt about it. Everybody's having a panic. Everybody's in PTSD to some degree. The degree is up to you. It's based on your patterning and you can disrupt the patterning at any time. The coronavirus is the coronavirus. The relationship is the relationship. Your child is your child. The weather is weather. How you respond to it 
will determine your co-created experience of it. Therefore, you need to ask, how do I want to experience this moment? Who gets to decide how I experience this moment? And how dare somebody else get to decide how I experience this moment? And if I want to be miserable all my life, I will be miserable all my life. And if I want to be joyful, I'll be joyful. It's literally that complex and that simple. It's so simple as it's switching the, it's flipping the switch. And it's that complex that you have to go into your past. You have to ask yourself, what is my belief system? You have to ask what I'm resisting, what I'm afraid of. Yes, you have to do some inner work. But in the end, it's as simple as making a decision. Go, you know what? I can be miserable, whining, upset, grieving, lonely, fretting, complaining, resentful, guilty, shameful. I can do that. Or I can say, it was what it was, it is what it is, and now here we are. And I can chant myself into a new experience. The amount of control we have over our mind is phenomenal. And you know how I know that? Because all of us are brainwashed. We have given our power of our mind to the religious people, to the psychics, to the medical profession, to media, to, to people on the outside. If they tell us we're pretty, oh my God, we're suddenly pretty. If they tell us we're stupid, now we're thinking, hmm, maybe I'm stupid. We give our power away so much to show you how much power you can have over your mind. The fact that somebody else has, has so much power over your mind means you can have that power. You can be that person who controls your mind. So if you like getting compliments every day and a compliment can really change your life, hello, give yourself compliments every day. Who's stopping you from being the Sam, the Jake, the Jack, and the Megan who you die for compliments for on the outside? Who's stopping you from be being that in your own life? Ah, I'll tell you what stops. You're not important enough for you. You're insignificant because you've abnegated your power to the outside, Sam's, Jake's, you know, Megan's and Mary's. You've decided that the outside world is more important. And as long as you do that, you will never have control over your mind because you give your mind to someone else. And these teachings are all about reminding you that you have power over your mind, only you. And you have absolute power over your mind. You have absolute dictatorship over your mind. You have absolute tyrannical, empowered control over your mind. I mean, I don't know how many ways to say it, to wake you up to go, nobody is creating your experience. Now, sure, the outside is the outside, but nobody is telling you how you experience it. You get to experience it, how you wish to experience it. You can enter lack or you can enter abundance. You can enter the past or you can enter the present. You can enter um, scarcity or you can enter empowerment. You get to decide. So the next time you're alone, you get to decide. Should I be lonely because I'm alone? Or should I be so excited that I get to spend time with myself? The next time you don't get a check from, the, from wherever, your unemployment or your, you know, your job and you have less money, you have a choice. Should I do what culture says, which is to panic, to feel bereft, to feel alone, to feel lesser than? Because culture says when you don't have enough money, you should feel all those things. Or should I go the other way and say, hmm, this is an opportunity. This means I can ask for help. This means I can do something different. This means I can experiment something else. This means I can downsize. This means I can get more creative. Which one will I be? And the line that differentiates between a thriver and somebody who succumbs is the line between one who decides to live in choice, in abundance, in creativity, or the one who succumbs to culture. Culture will always tell us to be in lack. Culture's way is to be in fear. Do you know why? Because this is how culture makes money. Culture thrives on you being miserable. If you were miserable, you wouldn't buy alcohol. 
very bad for business. If you are miserable, you won't get on a plane to go to Tahiti and the Bahamas. What, you're happy at home? That is terrible for the economy. If you didn't hate your job, you wouldn't die to go on a cruise ship. Terrible for the cruise industry. If you weren't so miserable about how you looked, you wouldn't buy every cosmetic in the world. Oh, that is so bad for the poor cosmetic, cosmetic industry. So bad. They thrive on you feeling terrible about your appearance. So they keep changing the standard of beauty. They keep creating more and more impossible standards. Why? Because we are such puppets, we go, wow, I feel less of that, let me go spend some money. Shoes, why is there new things in fashion? I mean, no knock on fashion designers, please don't write to me. But just as a concept, why do fashions keep changing? There are only four seasons in nature. Nature doesn't create new seasons. You know, nature doesn't say, you know what, this is out of fashion. You know, spring is out of fashion. Let's create a new version, a new iteration. You know, spring 2.0, spring 3.0. No, nature doesn't because nature is just what it is. It's happy, moving a little bit. It's content, being simple. Not us. No, we must have 2.0, 3.0, 5.0. And every time Apple changes its damn adapter, you're like, damn it. They change the adapter again. They change the head. This one doesn't fit in this one. Ah, very smart. Why shouldn't they? Because we keep buying the new version. You buy the new version, you have to buy the whole accessory. All of it. It's a fabulous way to keep you spending money. So culture will always keep you mired in lesser thanness. All the institutions will keep you mired in lesser thanness so that you keep in the institution. You keep thinking you need the institution, religious, education, marriage, children, parenting, so that you keep in there. Culture will always tell you you're not a good enough parent so that you can spend on the tutors, you can buy more things for your children, you can take them on more trips, you can buy them more electronics. Culture thrives on your feeling shitty about yourself. So every time you feel shitty about yourself, just know culture one. Culture one, one for culture, two for culture, three for culture. In every single day, culture is winning. Winning by far, by leaps, by bounds. And you know who's spending the money? We are, because culture wins. So the only way to take back your power is to take your mind back, which at its core is to change those belief systems from lesser thanness to abundance, from fear to power, from lack to abundance. That's your only choice. But all the people around you are going to keep you down because everyone is part of culture. Everyone is part of the brainwashing that you are not good enough. Because when you're not good enough and you feel shitty about yourself, I feel really good about myself. So all of us are doing this to each other. Why do you think we women, women will not admit this, but we women know we only get ready for other women. What does that mean? Because the men are not noticing anything. But what does that mean? That we women want other women to notice how amazing we are. We want other women to notice our purse because the men are not noticing. But why do we want women to notice our purse? Think about it. Isn't it terribly sinister that we want other women to notice what a great purse we have? Why? Because we want to feel amazing. We want to feel better than. You'll say no. You'll say, I do it because I like to wear the, the $6,000 purse. I like to carry a $6,000 purse. Mm -hmm, sure. It's because you feel lesser than. And unless we admit that, that most of our subconscious belief systems are programmed in lesser thanness, in unworthiness, in fear, in scarcity, in lack, we will, until we admit it, we will keep being reactive to the outside world. And we will keep having a huge pain body. And people will be able to harm us, hurt us, and we will feel victimized and, and downtrodden and depressed and wonder why we're depressed. It's because our pain body is so big. So unless we go inside ourselves and own how our belief systems are shaping our experience, there is no evil husband, there is no evil child, there is no evil president, 
there isn't, sorry. It's our belief systems that create our experience. We will not take our power back. We will not own how we need to change in our lives right here, right now. So this is how it all begins and ends with you understanding yourself, you owning your own life experience, you making a decision that this is how I'm going to live my life. This is how I'm going to own my own destiny. Culture cannot win over me anymore. No Mary, Beth, Sam, Jake, I, I'm sorry if these are your names, but nobody on the outside is going to own my mind. I'm going to own my own mind. I am going to take over and be the empress and the emperor of my own destiny. You manifest your life experience. You don't create the conditions. You can't help if it rains or if it snows or if there's pollen or not. You don't. But you do manifest your life experience. You don't manifest your life. You can't control life. Life is life is life is life. But you control the life experience. So don't forget that. Life is out of control. Life is out of control to a point that you can only laugh. That's how out of control life is. But your life experience, now that is up to you. And once you get that, once you realize that you are in charge of your life experience, you are unstoppable, you are untouchable, you are unfathomably powerful, and you are just out of, out of any sort of cage, out of any container. You are unbridled because you realize the power you have. You are the ocean, you are the sky, you are the cosmos, you are every living creature. You are that because you are energy and you are never caught in the form of the, the present moment. You, are real, you realize that you are beyond that. But all of that can only come when you get out of your own subconscious limiting belief systems. The belief systems bog you down. You have to cut the cord and begin to fly. You are your own destiny creator. You are your own map creator, your, your own script writer. You are your own author and authoress. You are, you are completely the owner of your life experience. And until you realize and harness that power, you won't fully be liberated. So give, give it to yourself today. Say to yourself, for one day of my life, can I be the complete creator, writer, conductor of my life experience? And you can watch how life is trying to pull you in into having a reaction. And you say to life, you're not getting me today. Today, I'm going to choose how I respond. I'm going to choose how I experience you. And you can go through the filing system of your belief systems and you can go lack, 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 more lack, more lack, damn it. I only have lack in my filing cabinets. And then you say, do I want to choose lack or do I want to create abundance? Even if in all your file cabinets, it's only lack, 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 lack. You can still say I'm disrupting that and I choose abundance. And then tomorrow, abundance. And now you begin creating a file cabinet of abundance. So now inside you, there's a true choice. This is how disrupting your patterns begins. This is how you begin to manifest a new destiny. When you realize that you are in charge of every life experience.